Creativity lies in all of us. It's what makes us human. starts with an idea, the desire to create. To solve. To play. To share. To interact. Together we can build new worlds. freedom to create for all. Hi everybody, welcome to Unreal Engine Build Automotive 2021. I'm Simon Jones, Director, Unreal Engine Enterprise. Back in 2016, when we held the first ever Build event in front of 300 invited guests, we couldn't have imagined that five years later we'd be streaming to an audience of thousands. We conceived Build as a way to showcase amazing uses of Unreal Engine from non-games industries, and in 2017 we hosted our first automotive event in Munich, Germany. Now this annual automotive gathering has taken on a life of its own online, so for everyone watching at home for the first time, welcome to the show. Of course, 2020 was a year like no other, with many of us leaving our offices behind and adapting to remote working. And since that first Munich event in 2017, we've seen such innovation from our fantastic community, including projects across design, production, engineering, factory planning, retail and autonomous driving. We've seen your marketing teams blend cutting edge techniques from Hollywood to produce some of the best marketing content created by any industry. The latest of these technologies being in-engine virtual production, which has revolutionised the creation of launch films, of product reveals and of global events like the one today. You'll learn more about that technology later as we take you behind the scenes. And perhaps one of the proudest developments for our team, we're beginning to see Unreal Engine appear in the car dashboard systems via our HMI programme. You're going to hear success stories covering all these subjects later today. Now, the vision which drives our team is at the core of Epic's philosophy, to build the best tools and put them in the hands of creators. And we continue to work hard to make content creation as frictionless as possible, whether you're working on a car configurator, designing an airport, shooting a movie or making a video game. We're continuing to invest in assets, materials and technologies to further reduce the high cost of content creation. And we have our eyes to the future and the convergence of everything we do in a persistent digital world, complete with a digital twin of everything. For the automotive industry, this starts with having a car that you designed in Unreal Engine be able to easily appear in a video game or a film, all of which is also made in Unreal. And this will keep getting bigger and bigger until all content is available in a fully connected and interactive environment, which is our vision of the metaverse. And it's people like us and each and every one of you being here today that are taking another step closer to being ready for the metaverse becoming a reality. This event isn't about Epic Games, it's about all of you. It's about all of your project stories, not just the ones that made the stage. And even though this year we can't meet at the bar and share a beer, I'm sure we'll all be getting together soon enough, we can hang out by interacting live in the dev lounges. Our whole team looks forward to meeting you there. We have an amazing lineup of stories to share, and I'm proud and delighted to be the one to kick off Build Automotive 2021. That's enough from me. Let's get on with the show.
Hi everybody, I'm your host, Doug Wolf. I'm a business development manager here at Epic Games, working in the automotive industry. The last time we all got in a room to discuss cool automotive stories in Unreal Engine was well over a year ago. And all things being equal, we would have been in one of those rooms by now already. However, we had to do things differently this year, and we're on a digital platform called Hopin. The video is streaming to you, but the key is you need to interact, interact with each other, and reach out to us. Build events bring you the biggest automotive stories of that year. And one of the biggest stories of this year is virtual production. BMW did something really remarkable. Not only did they build a virtual set, they used it to live launch a vehicle at their next gen show. It's an amazing story and I'm super excited to share it with you off the top. Wow, Hallöchen, Amy ist hier. Also sie haben mir ja gesagt, inhaltlich, was auf mich zukommen wird. Und dann haben sie mir gesagt, ich stehe in einer Cave und alles ist so Unreal Engine. Aber für mich ist das hier sowas von real. Stop that. Stop that. Because of the uncertainty, we had to change all our plans. We have plans a live event and mid-April due to COVID-19 we said we can't continue with these plans. We need to change this into a fully digital event. And therefore we then screened and evaluated the entire industry when it comes to virtual productions, when it comes to broadcasting studios, etc. And then after a while we came to the conclusion that this LED cave is the best of the best. Stop that! Yeah. The interesting idea is that we can go into some scenes and people who are doing the presentation, they're really in the scene and as soon as we pull out, we want to destroy that illusion so that you, you feel, oh no, they're on the stage. This back and forth playing with the spaces, with the impressions is really, really exciting for us. Everything is reacting to the camera motion and it feels really a lot more natural and it tricks you in uh, in believing that the people are really in the world. For the perfect illusion, you have to stick to some physical size relations. If, for example, a human is too big, really far away, it totally crashes the spatial impression because it's, it's wrong. Yeah, when Andreas came up with this idea uh, to produce Unreal content, um, we said, okay, all right, nobody has ever done it before. Tag, Leute, so, jetzt wird der Amy ein bisschen hübsch gemacht. Do you have a favorite world? Um, I like the simplicity of the design one. Like uh, it's uh, sometimes I like the forest as well. The one with supercar blondie when you have the wood and the stars and it sparkles and it looks so amazing like in a fairy tale. Something simple, it's pretty, it's nice colors. And actually the mini with the basketball court, that looks pretty cool. It feels quiet, it's calm and it's, uh, it's just nice. Jumping into these worlds, going out, going to the other one. You don't feel stressed, like it's just a peaceful place, and that's probably the one I like the most. Oh, no. 
So BMW has just shown us how you can use virtual production techniques for a live vehicle launch event. And that was great. It was an amazing accomplishment. When it comes to shooting commercials, virtual production also excels. In an indoor controlled environment, you can take the car and your whole team from the center of a forest to a space station in the blink of an eye. A bunch of top automotive brands have been doing this at a facility called the Hyper Bowl near Munich. Let's check it out. Cut! Okay, everybody, moving to the next scene. Ah, glad you made it. Welcome to the Hyper Bowl. This studio is a joint venture of four companies, NSYNC, ACHT, TFN, and Fornell, and now operates as an independent virtual production studio that is open to everyone. With more than 400 square meters of high-res LED, the Hyper Bowl is the largest volume of its kind in Europe. Even our ceiling is made of the same high-res LED as the walls. Automotive is a particularly valid use case for virtual production because its hero, the car, is such a glossy object. You can't photograph a car without an environment. And this is where classical studio shoots or even green screens hit their limits. Now we can radically expand what can be produced in a studio with all the benefits that come along with this. Here, we have steady lighting conditions over the whole day, which can be exactly reproduced at any time. You can shoot multiple locations in one day, and this is time-saving and cost-efficient, but it is also, of course, much more sustainable. And another important aspect is, confidential prototypes can be kept out of public at ease and still be shot as if they were on location. Wenn ich mir überlege, wie viele Straßen man schon abgesperrt hat für diverse Drehs. Das brauchen wir nicht. Und ziemlich geil für First Time, muss man jetzt mal sagen, dass das irgendwie so, so gut geklappt hat. Finde ich gut. What really fascinates me about this technology is that it opens up so many creative possibilities. When it comes to content creation, you can assume that about 80% of the traditional post-production becomes pre-production. You can use existing 3D pipelines to create your environments to be used on an LED stage. Concept artist, 3D modeling, shading and lighting, it's basically all the same, except you have to bring it all into Unreal and make sure that it can be rendered in real time. Then you can benefit from all the possibilities of a real-time engine, such as changing light in real time and altering the scene, but also virtual interactive shooting plan and previous. With this process, you can create a lot of content in very short time. The ID4 campaign was shot in only two days. We had five locations, two abstract worlds, six talents, and we created a 60 seconds ad, various formats for social media, and then also for different international markets. Virtual production is also getting a lot of attention for live communication, such as car launches or virtual keynotes. For these projects, we have combined the virtual sets with layers of augmented reality in real time. You can add virtual props to your set designs, and you can even present cars that only exists as a virtual concept and have never been physically produced. Working for a couple of years within the automotive area, I know the expectations of this industry on CG are very high. Moving footage has always been the supreme discipline. But with virtual production, known from Hollywood productions like The Mandalorian, there is now a cost-efficient solution which reflects the high expectations and can match the creative's ideas. Storytelling has become more important with today's customers buying a lifestyle alongside with the product. The CG environment can perfectly match the communication strategy 
and can be integrated into a seamless storyline using various media assets. Starting at the virtual courtyard for OEM internal management presentations, reuse at the commercial production and all other media assets, the synergies are obvious. Epic Games supports this by providing a huge Megascans library for free in all Unreal-based productions, which can be endlessly enriched by the recreation using the Quixel Mixer technology. Thanks for having us here from the Hyperbowl. It was a pleasure to be here and enjoy the rest of your build event. See you. So in those last two stories, we saw some absolutely huge car brands using virtual production techniques for both live events and car commercials. On the subject of virtual production, I'd like to invite a special guest, Alistair from our London Innovation Lab. Thank you, Doug. It's, uh, it's terrific to be here at the Auto Build event today. Um, I say here at the event, but um, it's a little bit of an illusion. Um, some of you may have guessed already, but um, the, the garage space that you see behind here uh, is uh, actually virtual. It's been created in Unreal and is being displayed on our LED demo setup at the Innovation Lab. Um, let's, uh, let's take a break for a moment and uh, we'll take a wander around and um, dive behind the curtain, if you will, and um, let me show you the Innovation Lab. Um, being as this is a break and I'm English, I'm going to grab a quick cup of tea as we show you around. Um, this space um, is actually a converted television studio and uh, it's a fantastic space to, to get lots of people in here to meet and greet and talk about the sort of stuff that they're creating in Unreal. Obviously a little bit quieter here today. Um, we've also learned to, to virtualize these things from the lab. So this is a great example of it. The Auto Build event will reach thousands and thousands of people and we're able to do that from here. Um, the lab is base camp for a fantastic team of artists that we have here. And that team of artists, they really roll their sleeves up and work alongside you in the community um, to make sure that the projects that you're doing in Unreal are as fantastic as they can be. They need to look as high fidelity as possible. They need to be optimized for their real-time interactivity as well. And that's what the, the group at the lab here do. Now, here's our demo uh, volume again. And just to point out, it's actually quite a small and modest space, but you can see the type of results that we're able to get out of this and bear that in mind for the sort of projects that you might want to do that don't always need to have a big stage set up. Right, let's um, jump back into the virtual world and I want to introduce you to a great uh, friend and colleague of mine over in America, Heiko, who runs the Detroit Innovation Lab. Um, I've got to actually try and get him up on screen because he's a hologram. Oh, there we go, on a, works on a good click. Heiko, fantastic to see you today. Um, I'm afraid I've wandered back on stage with a cup of tea. Um, great for me, but I'm afraid I didn't bring anything for you. So perhaps as a hologram, you'll forgive me. Um, it's fantastic to have you here with us in the Innovation Lab today. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing over there in Detroit? Now let's start a look at this crazy setup. I've been jealous already about the physical space you have. Now you're adding this amazing virtual space on top of it and you can summon me at will. Look at this. If I ever grow up, I want to be like you. But going back to your question, building a physical lab and collaborating with partners certainly hasn't been easy in the last year, but it gave us some time to rethink some uh, options that we have. And looking at the technology we have with virtual production, as well as what's happening in the virtual event space overall, um, there was the idea to build an extension to the physical labs in the virtual world, build a consistent space where you come and visit us, partner with us, work with us together. And so we're building that out now. I'm hoping I can do some tests with you, invite you into that space, and sooner or later we all can summon Alistair to us. I look forward to it, Heiko, I really do. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, from virtual spaces and virtual production uh, over to virtual interfaces and HMI, which is a, a big theme this year, I want to introduce you to Joe, who's our technical product manager at Epic Games for HMI. Over to you, Joe. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joe Andresen, Technical Product Manager for HMI and Embedded Systems at Epic Games. Last October, we announced our HMI initiative, and I'm here to give you an update on what we've been working on. One of the things that we discussed last October was this idea of design-driven development, where your Unreal project could be deployed directly to the vehicle in production. This allows designers to iterate more quickly on their designs and get a more polished design 
in front of the driver. Also, our partner Vectorform has developed an HMI starter widget pack as an introduction to developing HMI user experiences in Unreal. What's great about this is that there are UI templates that allow you to get up and running quickly with common HMI elements. They've also developed an HMI simulator. This allows you to take your Unreal HMI project and drop it into a 3D car inside a 3D environment and feed sensory information to your HMI. Things like blind spot, warnings, speed, day-night cycle, and much more are available for you to test before your HMI ever gets to production. The HMI Starter Pack and the HMI Simulator by Vectorform are available in the Unreal Engine Marketplace right now. I really enjoyed hearing from all the people who reached out to us and the cool projects that you're working on. If you haven't reached out to us, it would be great to see what you're up to. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. That was a great update. You guys might remember Joe from our HMI announcement. Our automotive partner in that film was General Motors, and they're here today with an update on not only their HMI developments, but a bunch of other cool stuff as well. How could a game engine that my little nephew is hooked on be a game changer at GM? That was one of the questions I had when I joined the team. I'm Karen Lair, and I lead the IT Immersive Technologies team. It started out with a teapot, then we made it spin, Fast forward to where we are now. We've used Unreal Engine to create efficiencies and improve experiences for vehicle design, simulation, marketing, and now with our infotainment systems. Here's a glimpse at just a few of the ways we've utilized the power of Unreal Engine and our awesome partnership with Epic. Global Creative Visualization, or GCV, is part of the industrial design function here at General Motors, and we're responsible for the first public look at our vehicles. In addition to the internal, highly confidential assets created during development. We also produce the first photos, videos, CGI images, and animation when GM is ready to show something new to the public, including the Hummer EV. For Hummer EV, the team produced an extensive and beautiful set of assets worthy of this revolutionary vehicle. I am continually amazed by the talent of our team. The portfolio of photography and video, often blended with CGI imagery and animation, shows the true capability of this vehicle. Today, I was invited to share with the design family an exclusive first look at the team's animation. Hi, my name is Stephen Gray, and I'm the manager of GM Design's Global Creative Visualization Group. We're responsible for crafting the first look you, as the public, sees of GM's products from a design perspective. We're based on Maya, VRED, Nuke, Adobe products, and now Unreal as our primary tools. GCV does a lot of live action CGI integration, and we will often work with short timeframes to put together projects. As part of our technical development, we're working hard transitioning this pipeline over to Unreal for flexibility and reusability the platform presents us with. Currently, if we have a track shot that needs to have the vehicle replaced, we need to go through a lot of steps in different software. Unreal opens up options to substantially streamline this process for faster replacements through GPU rendering. It's not uncommon for color, parts, or even the full surface to change during our productions. Unreal enables us to remove many traditional production steps, and there's a lot of value in that. Given the complex and varied assets we produce, separate pipelines for CGI images, immersive projects, and VFX exist. Amalgamating this through the use of Unreal for single data preparation pipelines and versioning systems is really very powerful in our world. There are areas of our business where we're already comfortably shifting asset creation over to Unreal and getting results comparable to our traditional pipelines. It's something the team's really excited about. Our clients don't care how a shot's created, just that it's believable and looks great. That's our measuring stick. Optimizing our pipeline through the integration of Unreal real-time workflow enables new creative possibilities, a more complex storytelling, and substantial increases in the volume of content. On the immersive side, we've found that the use of real video and photography adds a lot to create a strong suspension of disbelief during experiences. Combined with tools such as mega scans and photogrammetry, the future is exciting. Not too much I can say at this point, but stay tuned on that front and expect some great things from General Motors. Hi, my name is Scott Martin, and I'm the creative director for user experience at General Motors. 
By integrating the Unreal Engine into our infotainment systems to engage our customers with their vehicles in new ways, the engine is allowing us to make vast improvements in a few key areas. By achieving more robust vehicle visualization on our displays, more rich, more dynamic, and tailored to a customer's vehicle. Having a more responsive and iterative visualization process has been improving our design time and overall pipeline, allowing for quicker sketching, quicker feedback, and quicker overall turnaround times. Having the interactive data flexibility is giving us performance boosts not only in hardware but also in animation and improving our onboard memory storage footprint. The Unreal Engine has been opening the door to new user experience potential thanks to that real-time environment on board. Epic has been instrumental in collaborating with our development teams to help us optimize our processes and lay the foundation for what's to come. They've been incredibly informative and will be a key partner in our future user experience endeavors. We're just beginning to scratch the surface of what we can do with Epic's Unreal Engine and there's a lot more to come. GM is using Unreal Engine on many projects across many different business groups. Product design, engineering, manufacturing, IT and marketing are all working on Unreal based projects. We have proven Unreal can help deliver business value and we continue to create products and applications in Unreal Engine. But for us, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have a mission to continue to improve and innovate. We have a strategic goal to make real-time rendering more available and more accessible to our users. To empower teams to leverage better VR and desktop hardware. Unreal powered in-car experiences, autonomous learning and simulations, and visualizing our map data are just some of the targets we've set for ourselves. Thank you for allowing us to share our journey with you today. And we look forward to being able to share more with you in the future. Thank you. Being able to use your car model in multiple places is extremely valuable, whether that's a still, a video, or in a car configurator. In fact, car configurators were among the first use cases for Unreal Engine in the automotive industry. Real time, particularly VR configurators, were extremely popular, and you guys really embraced game engines as a solution for those projects. Year on year, car configurators in Unreal Engine get better and better and better, but I think it's going to be really hard to top this one. Pagani teamed up with MHP, Monkey Way, NVIDIA, and Google to make what is pretty much the best car configurator of all time. Let's have a look at it. Hello and welcome. My name is Emma. I'm responsible for the project management here at MHP, and my team and I are very excited to share with you a short insight into our Pagani Immersive Experience platform project. If you have the opportunity to experience the cars and the company, you get an idea about the craftsmanship the precision and also the passion that every single vehicle is built with. The clients are not only configuring a car, they are basically creating a very unique and hyper-personalized piece of art. This is an incredible but also very emotional experience, which was also one of our biggest challenges in this project. Because every single vehicle is built exclusively for a customer, the retailers don't have the physical cars available in the stores. We had to develop a solution that is visually appealing, photorealistic and provides this immersive feel all inside of an Unreal Engine based application. In our end-to-end -end approach, we created a visual, creative and technical concept together with the client. We also developed realistic 3D environments based on spheres or photogrammetry like the actual Pagani headquarter you can experience in our engine. This had also to be combined with a very intuitive, easy and fun to use interface with many interactive features. We recreated high definition materials like the very special tinted exposed carbon fiber options by Pagani. And after or during the configuration process, the clients can visualize their configuration in driving experiences or other digital giveaways that the retailers can provide to the clients afterwards. And of course, we had to realize the rollout and operation of our application on all dealer systems worldwide. Hi, I'm Kim and I'm part of the Unreal Development Team here at MHP. 
We put a lot of time and effort into creating this amazing looking interactive point of sales application, but we wanted to get more out of it and we wanted to use it for more than just a pure dealer experience. Over the last years, especially with the addition of ray tracing, Unreal basically achieved photorealism. So our goal was to use the point of sales application as it is to generate content, be it static images or videos delivered on demand or pre-rendered. We tried to break down our requirements for this. We need a description of a scene, get our application into the state and then render out an image. Easy as that. But different Unreal applications might use different input models, different interfaces or even use external microservices like rule engines. We didn't want to spend much time on integration and adoption of our tools for every application. So we thought, what if we created a standalone plugin with its completely separate communication interfaces and its own generic scene description? All the integration we would need is a small translation layer between this plugin and our native Unreal project. Having a uniform platform enables us to develop and reuse our rendering features in Unreal independently of the application the plugin is integrated in. This started as a rough idea on a whiteboard and it became what we call our Elastic Content Platform. The goal was to make it seamlessly integrate into any existing Unreal project and make all our custom rendering features part of it. We developed this idea in parallel with the Bacani application and integrated it into it, transforming a point of sales application into a flexible rendering backend. We used this internally to render out work in progress video sequences to share with Pagani for feedback, but we also generate hundreds of images for quality assurance purposes between application versions. And this platform was also used in our Pagani streaming demo to deliver screenshots to the user at home. It's a lot of fun to develop new ideas and use cases around this concept, because every time we want to get an image out of Unreal, it's easily possible. Hi, I'm Pascal Bayer, Application Architect at MHP, and I'm responsible for the service architecture of our Elastic Content Platform. The idea behind our offering is a modular service platform that can serve all of our customers' content needs from a single 3D pipeline. Modularization is the key success factor in building a scalable cloud-native content platform. The Unreal Engine is our core component for visualization. On top, components like a retail configurator, a streaming configurator and image on demand generation can be added as needed. Within a few minutes, each of these services can be scaled up and down automatically based on the content demands to provide high availability, but also keep costs under control. This helped us to deliver a real-time ray tracing streaming configurator for Pagani at the last GTC event within a few weeks only. The Unreal Engine perfectly fits into the modular approach by connecting our broad range of APIs on the one hand, but also exposing additional ones for interaction with the content on the other. Additionally, this allowed us to easily integrate existing systems in the enterprise world, like analytics or CRM. That strong, extensible and open platform foundation is enabling our current efforts towards a hyper-personalized content strategy in the future. It will enable our customers to create a more immersive experience and a deeper emotional connection with their brands by creating content on demand for newsletters, landing pages, interactive ads, digital giveaways, and so much more. So as you already heard from Emma, Pascal and Kim, Pagani offers the best possible digital experience to their clients, but we aimed to push the boundaries between digital and real world even further by creating configurable automotive film for Pagani. So we went for a three-day production and shooting at the Imola Formula One racetrack in Italy. The film which we produced might look like a regular TV ad, but there's one big difference. Like in the digital showroom, the cars in the film are instantly customizable. You can swap the model or color in and out as you watch, it's completely personalizable. To push the visuals as far as they can go, the rendering will accurately reproduce the real-time lighting from the filmed environment using real-time ray tracing from Unreal Engine. 
The technology involved in the production provides us a glimpse of the future of customer engagement and could play a unique role in how we showcase personalized content and products in the future. This is only possible with real-time technologies like Unreal Engine. The experiences we are building and which we are developing are more like games. All of this were made possible by an epic mega grant and we are really thankful to get this. And the best part for the Unreal community, and this is something which we are proud to announce today, the Imola racetrack environment and the Pagani hypercar as it's used on the project will be made available to download from the Unreal Marketplace after today's build event. So, thanks again for the event, thanks again to Epic Games for making this possible and thanks for having me. Projects that awesome are delivered when a group of companies come together to really try and accomplish something special. We've already heard from MHP, but those outstanding visuals were delivered by NVIDIA RTX GPUs. We've got Sean here from NVIDIA to tell us more. Hey, Sean, how you doing? Hey, great, Doug, thanks. So what's the state of pixel streaming at large scale and high quality right now? Well, Doug, in my mind, the Pagani RTX ray tracing streaming experience is the proof that we as an industry have finally reached the moment when all three of quality, performance, and price meet OEM requirements. First, the quality. The quality of the Pagani experience, in my mind, is testament to the amazing creative talents of MHP and the perfect suitability of Unreal Engine with NVIDIA RTX ray tracing for this streaming use case. Next, the real-time photorealistic performance of this experience, which can exceed 30 frames per second, is delivered today by NVIDIA RTX GPUs with dedicated ray tracing cores and NVIDIA NV Inc GPU encoding. When do you think this will roll out at a large scale? Well, Doug, it's a great question. And frankly, I think, it, I think the answer is today. Pixel streaming with ray tracing can be deployed today on NVIDIA T4 GPUs at Google Cloud, AWS, and Azure for around one penny per minute. And that's for the entire 16 gigabyte GPU frame buffer. Now, this pricing obviously improves if you're able to fit more than one UE4 streaming instance on that 16 gigabyte frame buffer. And this is the perfect opportunity to leverage NVIDIA's new DLSS plugin for UE4 that's now available on the Epic Marketplace. So DLSS taps into the dedicated tensor cores on RTX GPUs, and these are in addition to the dedicated ray tracing cores to upscale using AI, artificial intelligence. This means you can use a lower internal resolution in your UE4 scene and up-res on the fly on the GPU. So now you can fit more streaming instances on a GPU and thus lower costs. This project looks amazing and all of the stuff you said sounds great. OEMs are certainly gonna be excited. How can they reach out to you? Yeah, I would love to talk to OEMs about any of these uh, it, topics. Uh, please contact me directly if you have any questions. seyoung at nvidia.com. Awesome, Sean, thanks for being here today. Thanks, Doug. So the amazing visuals in that piece were produced by NVIDIA technology, but the experience was actually delivered through pixel streaming via the power of Google Cloud. Let's talk to Travis from Google to tell us more. Hey Travis, how you doing? Why is pixel streaming important for the auto industry? What benefits are derived with doing this on Google Cloud? Ah, great question. So uh, I think the auto industry uh, can benefit in multiple different ways. So uh, I think pixel streaming really does sort of lower the friction um, around delivering interactive experiences around products and, and services. And so I think when you when you kind of do that, right, uh, you unleash the power of virtual assets that businesses can leverage uh, to actually deliver these experiences or design products, uh, build products, right, go through virtual warranty processes. So there's a ton of things uh, that they can kind of address along that value chain. 
And that extends all the way out to things like marketing and, and sales. Uh, as you've seen with what we've done with Pagani, uh, we're really building sort of industry leading, uh, very interactive, high fidelity, real world simulated experiences. And I think that will change the way customers see and interact with products online. Why do you think Unreal Engine was the right technology for this project? So I think there are two reasons for that. Uh, so I think the, the first is really the people, right? The people at Epic are great. They're visionaries. Um, I think they, they see a very clear version of the future where interactive experiences play a big role in uh, everyone's life, right? Even outside of the role of uh, the traditional gaming space. Um, so I think the, the people are definitely key. Uh, great minds, great engineers, and, and great ability to deliver. Uh, the second thing is really the technology. So Unreal Engine is the world's leading 3D creation tool. And I think that will continue to be true as uh, the Epic folks uh, integrate and build out more capabilities into Unreal Engine. Uh, we're really looking forward to Unreal Engine 5 and what that'll bring to the industry. Can you give us a teaser of what future Google services will look like in this area? Sure, sure. So uh, I think we, we've got a set of design goals and, and principles around uh, removing any friction related to leveraging Unreal and delivering uh, interactive experiences. Uh, we think the auto industry uh, tends to be a, a sort of leading uh, industry in, in, this, uh, in this sector where um, high fidelity simulated real world experiences around vehicles uh, and around other aspects of the brand are, are really important to customers to help understand uh, how that car might you know, fit into their lives in, in the future. So I think um, you know, you'll, you'll see us deliver a service that allows everyone, uh, any brand, big or small, to be able to leverage pixel streaming to build and deliver interactive experiences in the future. Thanks, Travis. Lovely to have you here today. Sure, thank you. We've seen some really great stories so far, and there's plenty more to come but we wanted to take a few minutes to share with you our vision for how Unreal Engine fits in the automotive industry, as well as highlight some individual features that will really make your projects shine this year. So here's Heiko, not as a hologram this time, to tell you about our overall automotive strategy. Welcome to Build. I'm Heiko Wenzel. I'm the industry manager for automotive, and I'm excited to have you here today and talk about uh, our future perspective and a little bit about the past of like what we've done to like define the automotive industry as a segment um, for Unreal Engine and the product development that we see important to us. The automotive industry has always been um, a driving factor in the manufacturing world and like driving disruptions, changes of like how things are done, how things are being produced and messaged to the community. And we see a great opportunity for Unreal Engine to support in that field and be part of the overall user journey and the creation of the products. To support the different industries that we're working in, we started to build innovation labs uh, around the world. The one that is the furthest ahead right now is uh, the London lab uh, run by Alistair. If you think about the innovation labs as an engagement point, it shows our general philosophy of like how we engage with our product ourselves. We are part of the creative community. We believe that creative tools should be easy to access or free for the creatives in the world to create and uh, envision their products, work on a production platform or a, a product platform that encompasses a lot of elements that are necessary to be creative in this world today. And so what you see with Unreal Engine being free is to enable that access to this metaverse philosophy, as well as like thinking about what it takes to build open source platforms or openly accessible platforms as you see with Unreal Engine. And as I just pointed out, as being part of the creative community, one part of that vision is that it's a connected platform. It's an, it's an open platform and it gives you access to everything that you need to like build your vision of a product or a process or anything else that is connected to that world of real-time technology. And um, if you look at what we promote from a philosophy perspective, that all points into that direction of building a metaverse kind of system that connects libraries with um, real-time tools as well as with the engagements in between to drive the development um, of future industry engagements overall. 
Going back to the automotive industry, over the last four years, we worked closely with different clients that were willing to share where they're going and what they want to achieve. We learned a lot by the use cases, the POCs and the products that came out of it. Um, and it resulted in a better view of like how we need to make the product work within that field. With the Pagani POC that we have done, a key aspect where we engage with is the marketing and design side. We learned a lot out of these POCs. Um, it was great working together with Google and Nvidia in optimizing the experience um, and then going all the way through to understanding what does it take to create a product from a pixel streaming perspective that like is attractive and can be part of the overall channel communication that you want to have in that field, which all leads to that bigger platform vision that we have to make sure that like the components are all there for you to connect uh, a grand vision and a user journey that is meaningful. And like if you take that Pagani POC and how it showed what kind of experience you can have and like how quick that actually was created and connected to the other elements in that field, was particularly for me an exciting part of the journey to get to that announcement that we see with the automotive platform definitions that we're making all the time and we're getting really close to like showing you an overall picture of where we want to be in this field. If you take that automotive platform graph that has been shared a couple of times um, it, it gives you an idea of how we connect to the principles of the digital twin as well as the digital threat that's being used a lot in the industry but very seldomly you see a direct connection to the technology that enables you to put that into place within your production cycles or production definitions um, and if we take Unreal Engine as a core component of that platform approach that you want to see in the future from all the different engagement and trends level that we're seeing in the industry and that we heard from our industry partners about you you see that like having a visual data layer that enables real-time technology across the different departments where you want to use it as well as the connection from an iot site which is a lot more coming and which will be a focus for me to to understand how we make that better available to you and like see more pocs and application in the future in that field um, but all also like connecting it to the libraries that we put into the mix through Quixel um, and great shout out to the components that they created there and the library that they're building there that enables you to, to bring the world into your view without having to create it yourself or having to shoot it like in, in complex manners as it has been done uh, in the past. And um, what's open and what's left uh, really for us to do in that platform is to make a solid connection to the PDM and PLM systems. So we're going to look as, as a key step uh, in this year in figuring out how we make that a more solid connection and a better experience overall, um, which I haven't seen uh, uh, anywhere so far uh, at a major level with any software. So we're gonna try to figure out how we can make that a more convenient approach to truly underline and create the foundation of a platform system as we see it uh, based on Unreal Engine. Thanks, Heiko, for that glimpse at the big picture. But what about some features that can make a difference in your projects today? Let's hand over to Tomas to find out. Hi, everybody. I'm Tomas, Senior Product Manager at Epic Games. Today, I'm going to walk you through some of our product features and our vision for the industry. Hope you'll get as excited as we are about where we're taking Unreal Engine. Building an interactive experience for automotive, whether it is Deploying a car configurator or preparing a design review session involves many different stages where data is transformed, content is created and assembled, and decisions are made. Our vision is that Unreal Engine is the open platform where creators can build complete experiences, have full control over their assets, and can connect to any of their standard systems and tools. First, I would like to go through a few of our achievements. Unreal Engine introduced real-time ray tracing three years ago, and it has completely changed the way artists visualize cars, thanks to unmatched rendering fidelity and performances. And Epic Games continues to push the boundaries. 
Unreal Engine 4.26 brings performances and visual improvements from global illumination quality to translucent shadows and many more. Also in 4.26, still images and videos can be exported with the movie render queue. This tool can now create render passes for compositing outside of the engine and supports industry standards such as OpenCore.io or Pro Codex. Datasmith can now import, process, and optimize huge amount of industrial CAD data. It offers several options for automation from visual programming to Python scripting. Unreal Editor with Datasmith is becoming the most open, flexible, and performant tool for data preparation. With the new modeling tools, users can create geometry from scratch with poly editing or sculpting, or they can modify imported CAD data, adding details, generating UVs, deforming meshes. All of those operations are performed inside the Unreal Editor without having to loop data through other software packages. I can also mention the Variant Manager, which allows the creation and control of complex product configurations. Unreal Engine 4.26 brings variant dependencies that can be used, for example, to design option packages. Animating has been possible in a new editor for a long time, thanks to the sequencer. In addition, we now have Control Rig. It is a node-based rigging system, which allows artists to fully rig and animate a car or any kind of character within the Unreal Editor. In addition to engine features, we offer content to help quick start projects or illustrate the best practices. The project templates, shipping along with the engine, provide foundations for the most common use cases in the industry, such as photo studio rendering or collaborative design review in VR. Then, on the Unreal Engine Marketplace, we release free content that can be used to enrich your project. The Automotive Material Pack is a collection of high-quality materials using the Quixel library of textures. The materials are optimized for real-time performances as well as ray tracing. This material pack is updated with each new engine release. For example, we added support for anisotropy with 4.26. The marketplace also contains series of realistic automotive environments produced by Epic Games. So far, we've released a bridge, a beach, a winter road, and we have many more to come. We recently released a complete configurator sample which demonstrates how to put it all together with variants, rendering, animations in order to build a full car experience. The project is available from the Learn tab of the Epic Games launcher. All assets are provided from meshes to sounds and everything has been implemented with the Blueprint Visual Scripting language. It's a great resource to learn Unreal Engine. And UE5 is coming this year with Nanite, the virtualized micro-polygon geometry technology. Nanite allows users to forget about polygon count or draw call budget, and they don't have to worry about tessellation settings or removing hidden parts. Highest detail can be used for every mesh in the scene. UE5's dynamic global illumination system, Lumen, allows artists to manipulate light sources or move objects and see in real time the impact on indirect lighting. We believe that UE5 will change the way users create and experience any 3D automotive content. As Thomas mentions, the automotive configurator example is available now. You get it through the Epic Games launcher, under Unreal Engine, on the Learn tab. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. But I want to share another exciting development with you. For years, pixel streaming has been the way to deploy high quality Unreal Engine experiences on the web. And you could see from that Pagani example how great that can look. That was absolutely fantastic. But now there's another option so you can choose the solution that works best for you. Our friends at Animec have developed the Mega Converter plugin. It allows you to take the same Unreal Engine project that you're using for pictures or videos or even pixel streaming and export directly to WebGL. I really hope you like it. Hi, my name is Stefan. I work at Animec as a Chief Marketing Officer, and we are here today to present our new project, Unreal for Web. 
What we've been doing for the last year is to develop a plugin for Unreal that converts Unreal 3D scenes and 3D models so you can just publish them straight to web. Companies can reuse their content that they've already created in Unreal when creating web-based applications. Just convert your Unreal files and start developing a web-based configurator or an AR application or whatever you want to do in 3D online. Reusing all 3D materials that you already have in Unreal saves enormous amounts of time and makes projects much more efficient. The first version of Unreal to Web is aimed at the automotive industry, but I mean, anyone can use it. So now I'm going to hand it over to Aydin, who's our CTO. He's going to give you some of the technical overview of the plugin. Unreal for Web, it's more than a plugin. It's a groundbreaking GLTF exporter that converts your files, but also an epic enhanced web-based GLTF viewer that takes your assets online with key interactive elements that you are already accustomed to in Unreal. Both are open source and easily extendable. What's GLTF? An open standard made by Kronos Group. That's the guys behind WebGL to efficiently share 3D between a wide range of apps. It's specifically designed for modern photorealism, compact size, fast loading, extendability. In other words, perfect for the web. What can the plugin export? All the standard stuff. Meshes, both static and skeletal, textures, materials, default lit, unlit, all the blend modes, animations, level sequences, width sockets, bones, levels including cameras and lights, but now the interesting stuff. You can also export level variant sets. Let your users configure meshes, material, visibility, basically make your own web-based product configurator in three minutes. You can also export special actors and blueprints. HDRI backdrop, sky sphere, hotspots, and player controlled cameras for interactivity. Oh, and one last thing, let's not forget clear coat. How do we make it possible? By lots and lots of blood, sweat, and tears. We had to push some serious limits, putting GLTF on steroids by crafting epic extensions to support all the features, then fork the material analyzer and baking module to make the plugin even more powerful. The roadmap is not set, but this is what I'm looking forward to. More amazing Unreal shading models, more compression and optimizations to get every last bit and faster. Epic extensions to more WebGL engines, fine-tuned logging to help understand how to get the best out of each asset. Mobile focus. Thank you for listening. I'm super proud of what we've done. Let me hand you back to Stefan. We're super excited to have been working with Epic for the last year developing this plugin. We gave it to a bunch of customers and they all tried it out. The feedback that we got from them was awesome, finally. Now we can take our Unreal content online. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day. Bye bye. If you'd like to try out the Mega Converter plugin, it's available in the Unreal Engine marketplace. So, we've heard about our overall automotive strategy and some individual features and developments. Now I'd like to bring Heiko back for some additional thoughts and a look into the future. A good summary of all these points that I mentioned so far can be found in the Automotive Field Guide, which we just released. And the purpose of the Automotive Field Guide in, in general was to give you a good overview of all the touch points we see within that approach of having a platform for the automotive industry. You hear that term of having a platform so often, but like truly showing where all the touch points are and how we can focus on those and how we can develop against those uh, is a key aspect um, for us. 
and you will find um, about 30 use cases overall that are at the central focus for us to understand how to engage with the different verticals that we have. And if you look in the guide, you will find that we have um, six key engagement points that we believe give us good insights into the industry. And of course, with the announcements that we've made already and the things that you see in the event that's, that's with marketing and design, uh, which are very conventional, very easy entry points for a very visual high fidelity engine like Unreal Engine. But there is the other points that are really important to us as well, which is the engineering department where we see great benefits with using training applications or previewing and analyzing where you want to go. And it's um, with the simulation and training fields in general that we see a great future from an AR, VR, XR perspective of how there's going to be a massive change in the industry. If you see what the pandemic did over the last year, um, and how it forced people to think differently of how they engage across borders, how you provide expertise to different places in the world if you can't travel or if you want to ramp up things but you can't be there or you have to think differently of how you collaborate overall. Those kind of parts uh, show us where we need to do the most development because we believe that those things are going to stay. Uh, and it's things that we're taking to ourselves as well as how we operate um, in the field in general. And so I'm very excited to see what the, the next POCs are going to be in the next two years in that uh, particular field. Um, and so I hope uh, you have a chance to take a look at that uh, automotive field guide and we hope of course for more feedback uh, and more engagement along those use cases that we've defined to make sure we're as close as we can be to the needs that you see and challenges that you have in finding solutions um, especially on the real-time side but in the general way of how you engage with technology on the automotive industry side. Over the last uh, decades people have become accustomed to amazing experience on the gaming side based on game engines that have created game philosophies and all kind of technologies and storylines of like how to make sure that customers learn quick of like how to engage with the content how to to live in that world and that world is now coming into your product um, and why shouldn't it be fun? Why repeating ways of working that are kind of um, uh, not as engaging as they could be? And like using game philosophy and real-time technology can change that principle and can bring that kind of fun into the mix that you want to see that sparks that creative um, that every one of us has in, in, in him or her and like make us create better products in the future. I also want to use uh, the opportunity and, and give a, a big shout out to Quixel and the Megascans library that we have uh, here and that is available to you because it, it creates a big piece of the metaverse that we believe in. It reduces the amount of time it takes you to create content that is not product related and it gives you and us a great opportunity of creating content that, that can be shared across IPs and brands and create a world for creatives to like engage on different levels and create more value in shorter time cycles which is of course always a, a manufacturing and especially an automotive problem like how fast can you go to market how fast can you create the right things but if you take the the last year and the restrictions we had in traveling and creating new content libraries and the capabilities that we see through the mega scans and bridge and mixer allow you to create high quality realities that otherwise would be either impossible or very expensive to create and that makes it a key part of the platform that we see for the automotive industry and it gives you a unique opportunity in creating better content overall. I think one of the key elements um, that we'll see in the future is the collaborative aspect of Unreal Engine, the way how you share and like promote content that you've created, pixel streaming, WebGL, 
all these touch points that are related and based on uh, cloud-based computing will get more important and will drive development and engagements overall. So the smart digital user journey for any product in that field, but particularly for automotive industry, will be dependent on using the right technology at the right time, building a solid platform overall that allows us to connect the different data sources as well as the libraries and the metaverse as we see it. Um, and overall, that will allow us to create Unreal Engine as a, as a solid um, meta part of your production cycles and so we're excited about the things that are coming in the future in this uh, in this area um, and if you have any ideas uh, or any needs uh, that you see in the particular fields and in the use cases that you've seen throughout um, this presentation then please reach out to us and let us know how we can help <music>And we had the idea of using VR headsets in our development phase, in the early phase, to experience our future cars and also give the opportunity to our engineers, decision makers, to experience the car functionality, having a ride. And it was, of course, not just a thing about hardware. Having the VR headsets uh, is not enough. We also needed the appropriate software application for that. We already had rendering application at BMW, but the issue was that they really did not support VR. So we were looking for a solution on the market and the main usage for VR those times was the gaming industry. So it was clear for us to look there. And since the visual quality is one of the most important parts for our first use case, uh, we decided to use Unreal Engine. The success of our first project was so high that the usage of Unreal Engine was spread across BMW really quite quick. So we started to use Unreal Engine also for other departments like the factory planning, but also later in the phase for a dealer configurator for presenting the new cars so the end customer can go to the dealer and configure its personalized BMW inside VR using Unreal Engine. Here is a video for you, how BMW uses Unreal Engine for remote collaboration. Enjoy it. So I use Unreal Engine in my work for visualization things. We can show everyone who's involved different solutions for problems then everyone is able to imagine what will happen in the real car. We were able to show the designers what we did and um, they had the same quality like before in the meetings. They were able to move into the car and show me which perspective they, they meant, if they had something like they, they didn't like. That was really cool. We are having a very big structural changes in our plants. We are implementing the new model E4 with 2D 
tools like on the paper or PDF, we were forgetting, for example, a scanner or a screwdriver. We have the possibility now really to build up exactly everything, how it's going to be. That's giving us the opportunity to be a communication tool. For example, Teams meetings, um, I can open my project and together with the process plan and the logistic planner, we can try out new uh, alternatives and we can optimize the planning status in the early phase. This is saving us uh, time and costs also. We have less customers in our showrooms. Yeah, that's why it's very important to have another way to show our customers the different cars, different options, different colors. Eve is an um, emotional virtual experience. We use it all time, every day, to show our, our customers um, our stock cars, what the options, or calculate or configure a new car. And after that, I can show my customers here also in the screen, or I can send the link via mail with the offer to my customers at home. It's easier for my customer to select the right car. Half hour or one hour and we have a finished configuration with the customers. My customer is happy, I'm happy, yeah. For me as a software developer there's no barrier between me and the business partners. When it comes down to implement the software, what we use to you know, enable remote work, most people don't even know it's a game engine behind everything. The great thing about using the Unreal Engine is that it, it provides a perfect base that has everything you need to implement the perfect solution for any need. Work habits are changing. They can leverage the fact that Unreal Engine is a connecting technology that allows people to collaborate. So whether you're in a dealership, whether you're at home, whether you're interacting with a customer, by running off the same Unreal Engine platform, you can really do awesome things. Isn't it great how BMW benefits from the usage of Unreal Engine for collaborative work? But the question is, what's the next level? And the next level could look like that it's not just used for BMW employees, but also extended for our suppliers, that we have a common collaborative environment where we can work together interactively. Thank you very much for participating and enjoy the rest of this event. Thank you. Earlier in the show, Heiko touched on the topics of simulation and autonomous vehicles. They form a huge part of our automotive strategy. And I'd like to invite Sebastian Lose, our industry manager for simulation, to tell us more. Hello everyone. My name is Seb Lose. I'm the simulation industry manager here at Epic Games. If you are attending these sessions with us, it means that you already understand that Epic Games is committed to provide a meaningful and relevant set of solutions to the simulation community, as well as the healthcare, defense, and civil aviation simulation applications the automotive domain represents a quasi-unlimited source of use cases which can be sorted in two main categories, analysis and training. Now, within these two categories, two main segments of applications coexist. The first ones are linked to the driver-related use cases. Everything where the driver needs to interact with its vehicle, this encompasses the notion of driving simulation as well as, for example, the vehicle human-machine interfaces or HMI prototyping applications. The second segment of applications is linked to the analysis and training applications where no humans are involved. These are all the autonomous vehicle use cases which goes from conceiving these vehicles towards ensuring to feed them with the right experience before they hit the road. As you can see, from the first elements of this taxonomy to ensure for Unreal Engine to remain relevant for this multitude of applications, we have to maintain a very strong platform approach. But this would not be enough. There is a particular problem linked to simulation. A simulation application is a stack containing your framework level, where Unreal Engine lives, along with your standard data set and communication layers. On top, you have your second level, which is the integration layer. And this integration layer is topped by a dedicated feature set layer, containing all these useful tools and functionalities specifically developed for your applications. So to summarize, you have a layer cake of technology, integration, and specialized feature layers. In the specific context of simulation, 
the entire community realizes that monolithic solutions are not often the best approach and that walled garden technology cannot be the right solutions. So while we take care of the first layer of our layer cake, by continuing to grow the core of Unreal Engine and to innovate with new modules and assets, as Thomas mentioned in his presentation, we are also lowering the effort for the simulation creators on the second layer, the integration one. By supporting our users either at the technical level or the business level, we are growing an ecosystem which from motion queuing systems to HMD equipment passing by machine learning, allows a tangible integration accelerator around Unreal Engine. In the sessions that you've attended here and in the presentation you have seen, you saw a glimpse of what is possible when you aggregate the right software and hardware architecture around Unreal. As you saw, building simulation solutions for the automotive domain is entering a new phase of maturity and it is time to engage in a more active way together. So send us a line at simulation at epigames.com. Our simulation team is waiting to learn from your ideas, your challenges, and your dreams. For the second part of our presentation today, I'm very happy to introduce the team from AV Simulation. In the course of the last year, AV Simulation took their already very experienced and established solution scanner and brought it from its uh, existing technology to Unreal Engine. This transition was a very important move in the R&D team from AV Simulation, and they are here today to talk to us about it. Hello everyone, I'm Tom Nguyentat. I'm Automotive Domain Director at uh, AV Simulation, and I will present you the amazing work we have been doing with Epic Game to develop the new scanner generation tool. So we developed Scanner, which is an open, modular, and scalable driving simulation software. Scanner is a tool to simulate a virtual environment to test automotive systems. It means that we build virtual road, virtual traffic condition, and scenario for automotive engineers that works on EDA system, headlamp, chassis, body design, and HMI. We also build driving simulators, which are very big machines with cylindric screen and motion system. At the moment, we are developing the two largest driving simulators in the world, one for BMW and the other for Renault. Our aim is to accelerate and secure the development of autonomous vehicles. There are two big challenges for this incredibly complex system. The first one is that you need to make sure, before putting the vehicle on the street, that they will be safer than human driver. It means that you have to prove that they can perform in any day-to-day -day situation, every time of the year, any weather or traffic condition, and for every road in the world. It's such an incredible challenge that it has been computed that if you had to prove that in reality, it would require billions of miles of real driving that would take hundreds of years. Simulation is then the only solution. The second challenge is the interaction between the driver and the system. You can build a very sophisticated autonomous system. If it is not understood or trusted by the human in the car, it will be useless. Simulation is again very useful to study the driver behavior in complex driving tasks, because you can study how the driver behaves and reacts to dangerous situations in a very safe environment. It means that we have to simulate not only for the driver, but for the complete perception system. And it's a much more complex task because the human brain can make adaptation to understand the difference between the simulation and the reality, but the sensor system won't. Any slight difference between the simulation and the reality will change the result. To address these two big challenges, we had to invent and develop the next generation simulation tool to immerse not only the driver, but also the complete perception system camera, radar, LiDAR. And for that reason, we have chosen Unreal from Epic Games. Why? Because it's the more realistic and performant 3D engine on the market. It's physics-based and we need to bring trust in the simulation result. It's very complete with the full editors and very easily accessible to the final users. It also brings a very rich marketplace with a lot of high-quality 3D assets. We also found out that Unreal was very popular among our customers. We have developed a complete seamless workflow that very easily brings a high realism to our customer with their existing assets 
and scenario. We have developed this very rich and very detailed environment model where you can dynamically change the time of day, the weather condition, where you can have multiple vehicles, pedestrian, animals in the scene. You can program very complex scenarios from everyday life. We also have developed standard NCAP scenario tests with our partner Utaxeram that behave exactly like the one on the test track. We also have developed an automotive camera sensor model that generate photorealistic images and exhibit exactly the same default that the real camera. That really allows to verify how your perception system will behave in any complex situation. We also provide a more advanced workflow for advanced users that have development skill to completely customize and enrich their rendering. We also have a very complete roadmap to improve the environment creation, to integrate all the sensor models and to move our headlight simulation tool to Unreal. With this new solution, our customer can recreate super realistic simulation environment that they can use to perform their validation test and prove that their system are safe. This is really a strong accelerator for them and it will bring autonomous system in the street sooner than expected. Well, thank you very much for listening and I wish you a nice event. We've got one last story for you and it's a great one. Over the years, we've had a bunch of the world's biggest car brands present at Build, but we've never had Volkswagen until now. The teams at Univis and Effectataja worked with Volkswagen to create something truly remarkable. A pipeline that ingests raw CAD data, uses AI and produces marketing ready assets. It's called Project Solid Machine and I'd like to share it with you now. Simplification in our complex industry is always in demand. After all, we at Volkswagen are a very data-driven company. When a customer configures a car on our configurator, he also defines the DNA of a digital twin, which is born right inside of our database. One single car might hold millions of different personalization and configuration options. Each car part that changes on the inside and outside of the car originates from a gigantic database which holds detailed information about size, function, identification numbers and so on. We call this car DNA PR configuration string. Ever since real-time technology was able to render an image of our complex digital twins, we were searching for more and better ways on how to automate our production pipeline and to capitalize off our wealth of data. When VW approached us with the idea to use real-time technology in order to cut down post-production times of their digital marketing images, I was more than intrigued. So we had to find a way to somehow convert VW's cut data into real-time data without changing the underlying structure. Yet cut data was never intended to run in real-time performance. In close collaboration with VW, Epic Games and Effectetage, we developed a solution to this challenge called Solid Machine. A challenge considered by many as the holy grail of the automotive industry. Well, at least to marketing it is. In a modern day real-time engine, the CAD data has to be entirely simplified, restructured, regrouped, and the appropriate metadata has to be extracted and assigned to the correct geometries optimized for real-time productions. Solid Machine handles the error-prone and tedious process of real-time optimization automatically. Our AI routines will analyze the CAD data and check for errors and correct them wherever necessary. PR string metadata will be connected to the correct real-time geometry. Wrong shader material or geometry names are corrected by a fuzzy logic system. And digital materials are getting segmented and automatically assigned to the correct real-time car parts. The CAD data will be ready to use in the Unreal Engine with breathtaking performance, but we also need to reduce and fix a lot of polygons. This is where our Solid Slim module comes into play, our own semi-automated reduction algorithm. Solid Slim automatically detects polygon errors and corrects them before the reduction process. Geometry parts can be categorized in reduction groups to not having the 3D operator making adjustments for the same kind of part over and over again. With Solid Leap, we created an AI tool for artists. 
Leap analyzes the output of a material in a huge material library. This can be a picture of a car or a reference picture if you have one. We can see how the car paint shader is supposed to look. We tell Leap to only look at the car paint shader and then Leap will analyze the reference picture and try to match it in Unreal. The AI does the same thing an artist would do, but it just tries out more variations in less time. It's a great tool to speed up the artist process and our first addition to our AI-powered artist tools for Solid Machine. One of the most challenging tasks is getting the correct PR configuration string for multiple car configurations. What do you do if you work at an agency that has to set up a bunch of different car configurations like a Passat variant with certain rims and certain colors? It's highly probable you don't know any of those PR codes. With Solid Matter, we learn all possible car configurations of a car while we are processing the geometry parts. Solid Meta is able to show the user if a given configuration is known to the AI and if not, why it is different and what would be the closest known alternative. The user then has the possibility to see that alternative configuration with or without changes enabled that he or she wants to add. This way, we know if the configuration given is valid or if there will be car parts that are missing and might lead to visual errors in a later review stage. In Solid Creator, everything you saw comes together and gives the user the power of Unreal and Solid Machine in one easy to use interface. Solid Creator works right in your browser and it feels like playing a computer game while you are making great looking marketing pictures. So let's say you want to change the configuration of a car. You can do that via the configuration tab. This is also the place where you can check the PR string for buildability through our AI. Let's say you want to change the car paint. For this, you open the paint tab. Now you see all the possible paint options for the current PR string that our AI has learned so far. You can change configurations easily with a click and do the same for the rims. To get a better view on how this change looks, I simply need to go through the cameras in the upper menu. The PR string adapts in the background and can be accessed at the bottom of the configuration tab. Solid Machine and its IA tools help us to cut down production times and really to focus on the beautiful pictures instead. The technology eases our pain when working with automotive CID data and makes more complex processes much simpler. Solid Machine in combination with Unreal Engine is a bliss. Not only we were able to adapt the Unreal Engine into our production pipeline very fast, we were also able to produce movies entirely within the Unreal Engine that people thought we could use in classic DCC packages with compositing. With the Solid Machine, we're going really the next level of car visualization. The combination of CAD data with AI components really brings us to another level. And I'm looking forward to see how we can save efforts and fasten up the processes. I think that's really the next big step in our business. It was a great honor to work with Epic, BW and Effect Etage on this project. We can't wait to see what our clients will do with this new technology. Thank you for joining us. Stay well and have a great day. So that was Project Solid. And how inspiring was it? But how inspiring were all of the stories that we shared today? To be honest with you, that's what the point of a build event really is. The projects we inspire today become the build event stories of tomorrow. If you have been inspired and don't know where to start, the best thing you can do is go to unrealengine.com and download Unreal Engine. It's free. Once you begin your Unreal journey, we would love to hear from you. And there's lots of ways that you can reach out. You can go to our automotive hub page that collects all of our industry stories in one place. You can sign up for the newsletter there and we would encourage you to do that. If you have a specific question, for example, we have a great training department that can take your whole team and skill them up on Unreal Engine. Or you'd like to join something like the development initiative we have for HMI, you can reach out to us on social. Our tag is at Unreal Engine pretty much everywhere. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Now this event here is designed to be the kickoff of automotive content in 2021. We have a great lineup of stuff. We've got webinars around specific topics. We have a web series called The Pulse that has automotive episodes. We do summits with small groups of people and really dive down on certain topics. There's a lot of it coming up. 
The way to stay in touch with that is just to watch your inbox because that's where we'll be dropping all the information. Now, off the top of the event, I asked you guys to socialize and chat throughout the whole thing, and I hope you've been doing that. And just because we're coming to a, conclu a conclusion, that doesn't mean we're going to stop. Off to the left here, you can see the link for our dev lounges. These are specific chat rooms that are manned by all the people who have been in this film for you to ask all of your questions and interact some more. They'll be open for about an hour, so I hope to see you there. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the speakers. It's their content and time and dedication in being filmed that really makes up all the real interesting stuff in this event. And finally, I'd like to thank you, the audience, for your attention. Have a great day. Thank you.